And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Let's talk about something important. Put that coffee down. I'm not here to waste your time. Where else you're gonna have this much <laughs> fun? You the man. You the man. Todd Father. Show me the money. What I've been doing? Had to trip on my bag. Had to trip on my bag. Wow. Had to trip on my bag. Wow. Had to trip on my bag. Yeah. Had to trip on my bag. Sixty percent of the time, it works. Every time. That doesn't make sense. Well, it's no trick to make a lot of money. All you want is to make a lot of money. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another live duo show. Whoa. Let us know if you guys can hear us. Let us know if we're not blurry. <laughs> Good times. Good times. What's going on? Back on the live duo. Like we did last time at the, what, the last bear market. We jumped in there and went hard, and we're getting ready to do that again here. So, Yeah. So make sure to hit that like, share, and subscribe button if you like daily updates on both crypto and stock, technical analysis, fundamental analysis, news. And if you want 24-7 access to myself and Todd Butterfield, join us at patreon.com slash learn crypto. A dollar a day could keep the bankers away. Todd, I don't know if you want to jump over to my screen. We'll quickly look at CoinGecko, and then we'll let Todd look at some charts. I thought we'd maybe give a chance for more people to get in here. I know I got some people coming. And, uh... Okay. This is kind of our first duo live show with this new little rendezvous set up in our uh, software. So uh, make sure everything's working right here. I believe we look pretty good. So uh, if Zimby Jim's not going to give us any problems, we got stocks uh, kind of making a top today. One reason I wanted to be live here. And we've also uh, really gave a sell on that Bitcoin pump up, which we're going to talk about. But we're sitting here Bitcoin at the lows of the day. So. We're going to jump into that. So, uh, Nick, let me give you your screen and you can do your thing. Cool. Do I got the screen? You got it. Well, we've been saying on Twitter and stuff not to kind of chase the grayscale news in the Bitcoin rally. And what do you know? Today, the past hour and the past 24 hours, Bitcoin is down about 1.2%. We're seeing this kind of plague the overall market. Ethereum is down about the same. And some altcoins are actually doing okay, but they're still down 1% to 2 to 3% as well. I know Todd's going to go over the charts. We exited a lot of positions before the major waterfall, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, Solana, as well as Coinbase, MicroStrategy, and Riot. Uh, but we have not found the re-entry. So we got a little nervous with the rally yesterday, but we stuck to t stuck to our philosophy. We didn't chase that green bar, and so far that was the correct move. A lot of people jumped to the conclusion that the grayscale uh, was an approval of the Bitcoin spot ETF, but really it was just an order for the SET, SEC to review uh, the, their documentation for the Bitcoin spot ETF. And we're seeing the sell-off ensue now. Uh, and we'll talk more about what we think for the future of these other Bitcoin spot ETFs. But first, let's uh, definitely go over to Todd. Let's take a look at these charts uh, because I know that's what you want to see when you wake up and see a little red on CoinGecko. I mean, we've got the, uh, both screens up now. Really in front of us is our uh, Bitcoin USD Coinbase uh, software chart. We did have a uh, oversold technometer down at the lows. We didn't have an overhead buy, which is really a mistake of mine because that rally just happened too fast, too quick. And uh, but we topped out there at twenty eight thousand one fifty. We weren't friendly up there. Nick had been long uh, coin, C-O-I-N stock. So we did take profits on that. And uh, again, didn't chase anything, wanted to. But actually, my technometer on the software got up to uh, I think I quoted in the discord forty nine to fifty two fifties overbought. So uh, we, uh, and that definitely, that put a top on it up there above 28,000. We're on the lows right now at 26,586. And uh, personally, I think uh, we're probably gonna go down and go to that 24.8 level, I'm guessing. So we're kind of waiting on buybacks for, as Nick said, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, SOL, BNB, INJ, we were talking about. Uh, so really all those, we're looking to buy back MicroStrategy, uh, Riot, might pick up Mara. We'll definitely pick up Coin again. Nick, if you want to give the Coin mm -hmm. trades, because you sold it up there at 105. I believe yeah, the so we sold, uh, 
Yeah, we sold that Coinbase around like 105.50. We were we kept lowering our overhead buys over at patreoncom slash crypto and we bought back around like 76.50. Uh, yesterday's rally put us about 11.2% in the green. Uh, we took the position that we thought that was a rally to sell. We've sold it um, at 84.50 roughly. And right now, Coinbase is now following Bitcoin back down to $80.51. We will be wanting to buy that back. You know, I think it's going to be very vitally important. We believe in the space, but we want to expose ourselves to stocks like Coinbase, like MicroStrategy, like Riot, that we think are going to really thrive when the next Bitcoin bull market comes. So we're, we're treating them. We're trying to put profits in into your pocket and or increase the share position, the share size positions over in your portfolio. And, and right now we've been pretty dead on with that. Now we do have very little exposure to the markets right now. Uh, so this downturn right now is great, but we got to make sure to uh, find re-entries for you guys to make sure that we do have exposure to the market that we love so much, which is crypto. Yeah, let me add that sell to the chart here because I didn't have that here since I hadn't been live. I do would like to add that to have on the chart. Because I was showing the 105 sell you gave and then the buyback. And uh, I'll catch that a little bit later. We got 26,550 on Bitcoin here. So definitely coming down a little bit. I'm going to show, uh, I get, a, get comfortable with these screens here. I'm going to take over and go to some Elliott wave counts on Bitcoin that I've been looking at. So let me do that. Here's the five minute chart on uh, Bitcoin. You had the big rally off the grayscale news. Again, we're down here at 26,575. If we go to some of the Elliott wave counts that I've been uh, looking at, I had shown here before when I'd been live by myself, green five waves up for five, uh, for the first uh, impulse wave up, then an ABC in red. Another five up, another deep ABC. That was a bullish count, which I really, once 29,100 on our long positions was taken out, giving us just a $210 gain. It kind of turned the charts bearish. So with the charts turning bearish, then I'm going to go to really this count. Again, you can see five waves up in purple, ABC down, maybe an ABC up here. So we'd get quite a bit of sideways trading in the, in the coming months or also this count. Let's go to. Let me bring this one up. This is probably the preferred count now with the last rally we had. Let me bring that chart in a little bit. You can see again, five waves up in green and then a uh, large red ABC and that ABC is ABC down, ABC up and then yellow five waves down for the final C wave lower. And again, that would show somewhere maybe down around 24,000 because I do think stocks have topped out here, which I will show that in a little bit. But uh, this is kind of my preferred count at 28,000. potential targets of that be and then also you know todd is using wyckoff and elliott wave here from me a little bit different technique technician using rsi this would create a bullish divergence for bitcoin as well which would line up with the theory that todd has me and todd both do our own technical analysis we re-collaborate see what makes sense and if we both generally when we both have the same opinion using different methods that, that give us the same answer those are usually generally really good buy setups or really good sell setups it's kind of what happened yesterday when we both said let's not chase this rally based on all these indicators and so far the sell-off has ensued. But sorry, go ahead. What what would that mean for your target if you want to take back over the full screen? I mean, the move down to 24,000 would be an ABC down complete. That would be a large wave one, two, and then we're headed for that rally. There's 26.5 being taken out. Quick alarm. So again, we continue to, to uh, fall apart here. Yeah, it'd be a one, two, and then we'd be ready for that move up to let's say, uh, you know, 50,000, et cetera, up in those levels. So we're hoping to pick the next low in stocks and then also uh, this hopefully coming low in Bitcoin. Yeah, and what that means for a fundamental perspective, that 45 to 50,000, we mean Todd have been talking about this a lot. And historically, we would expect to see some kind of run up pre having. What this does is it gets you to 45 to 50,000. Everybody's putting their $100,000 Bitcoin hats on, getting all 
FOMO getting all excited. And then we probably will see that would be a major top. We should be selling up there. We have some sideways to lower leading into the halving. And then, of course, the, uh, the, the, the macroeconomics of the halving with the reduced supply, excess demand kicks in. And that's when we have the next major bull run, which does take us to new all-time highs. So I know that's a little far out for you guys, but it kind of gives you the bigger picture of how me and Todd are, are trading the markets, where we think we're going in these markets, and uh, to show you that we do look at historical data. So we're trading on small time frames and midterm time trades, trying to make profits, but we also have the long-term histor- historical cycles in the back of our mind. Uh, trying to be on the right side of, of, of every market cycle that we can. I'm going to take over the screen and show uh, some stock uh, general indices here and a, and a micro strategy, uh, riot, et cetera. So let's go and do that real quick. Because again, why I want to be live today, we got the SPY ETF in front of us. You can see lower right, the technometer 49.24. A reading above 50 is going to give me the red dot sell. So if we started a downtrend, you want to probably... Uh, you know, be definitely recognize this uh, overbought reading on this recovery rally. It kind of looks like an ABC recovery rally here. So if the stocks could turn down here, I would think that's going to drag down Bitcoin. And you can see also same type of thing. Let's go to QQQ. I still think Bitcoin really is just a high bed in NASDAQ stock, basically. So you can see here again. 49.18 49.18 on the technometer, anything above 50, another sell. So this market has been stronger. The sells somewhat pick some tops are a little bit early, but if we start a downtrend again, if we had five waves down off that uh, purple wave five, this would be an ABC back up and now we're ready to try the downside. So uh, definitely got to be watching out for that. Let's quickly look at micro strategy. Again, these trades were done in the uh, patreon.com slash learn crypto. Let me bring that chart in so we can see the Wyckoff labels. We had given a buy there. On the, uh, we, People giving buys and sells arbitrarily after the fact or looking at, you know, setups after the fact. These are live trades we're doing with real, our real own money. And the patreon.com slash learn crypto community is real money. So I just, you know, that's kind of how we differentiate ourselves. You know, we're not going to have these hype videos and we're not going to have the most followers, but everything we are doing is time stamped. And we are pretty much, uh, what do you, what do you always say? We're, we're pooping in a glass house with everything we do. So we're trying to be transparent. We've worked in traditional finance. We're trying to bring that level of transparency to the crypto finance and help everybody on their journey and a right. structured and, approach and i'm a registered investment advisor so i can't be uh, just talking the talk we gotta walk it too so as you said these are trades we're actually giving out to the patreon or i'm giving out to pro traders at wyckoffsmi.com or i could be doing for my uh, private client group that i trade through charles schwab but let's go back to this the uh, micro strategy chart because you can, again you can see here the wyckoff labels we had bought what we thought was the backup took about 25 percent out we did sell a little bit early there what we thought was going to be the jump. Reason I'd done that, I thought it was going to pull back below 29,000 on Bitcoin. The miners and uh, and MicroStrategy did run a little bit more uh, because the short levels were so high in there. But again, we got this back up. We still think there's going to be a little bit more downside. We was overbought here, but uh, when we get bullish on stocks and Bitcoin again, MicroStrategy, also another one was Riot, took a 44% gain out of that. Let's throw it out up real quick. Same type of thing. Got accumulation, jump and a backup. A 44% gain. We sold up there around 1540, I believe the price was. Setting here at 1160. We had an oversold reading there, uh, you know, eight days ago at the low. Again, we was waiting for a little bit lower. Missed that gray school news, so uh, or the grayscale news, so missed a little surge. But we would have sold that yesterday. And the day before, like we did in coin, because we just don't think that's the start of this rally quite yet. So let's go back to the duo screen here, Nick. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, so I mean, that's, that's kind of where we stand on that. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, throw them in there. I know uh, Harsh over here wants you to give your thoughts on PLTR and SoFi stock, if you want to pull those up. Are there any good long-term investments and where would it be a good buy zone? 
We also have Cameron Woods in here saying, Nick is a handsome fellow. Well, thanks, Cameron. Appreciate you. That means and, he's telling you you're right. ugly, Kyle. And Cameron <laughs> does not have glasses or contacts in. So he could be and, mistaken. But, so let's let's look at PLTR and SoFi, and then also we just got a new member that joined that wants the the quick Bitcoin analysis on the full screen Bitcoin chart. All right, let's go to PLTR. That one uh, got downgraded today by somebody, I believe it was down like seven percent today. You can see that uh, red bar today. That is one that I told the group I thought maybe could uh, lead us higher. So that's one I would buy on some type of pullback. But for now, again, let's look for a little bit lower. Something down there around. 12 or 13 would be a spring and look a little bit better on the charts. So uh, that's my first thought is look for it to uh, go a little bit lower. Side of the trick. SoFi is not in my software, so I'm going to make a note to add that. My software is really data and sen sensitive. It's going off of five minute data. So I do not have uh, everything in there, but uh, I will add that for next time, Harsh. And uh, let's go back to, uh, we'll go back to our Bitcoin chart here. Let me grab that real quick. I'm gonna go to a little bit longer term chart here. All right, so there's the Bitcoin chart, let me, Got a lot of data to load on this thing. Chart's got to load five minute data going back the year, so quite a bit of data points here. But you can see the uh, Wyckoff labelings. We had. Uh, the sell-off into June, which was a selling climax, automatic rally, secondary test. The FTX had the big breakdown. We bought right before that. I thought it wouldn't be as deep as it was. But then we got a nice five-wave rally off the low ABC pullback there into late December. That gave us a shakeout in the test, so we did catch all of that rally. Uh, we had a sign of strength, last point of support. Again, we caught that. And then uh, we had the jump and the backup. I did uh, here on the jump in the backup. I've kind of just been trading somewhat sideways. We were long there at 28,890, sold at 29,1 before the last breakdown, looking for another backup. So again, we are getting that. And you can see here, we was oversold there five days ago. Uh, didn't jump on it because I just, again, I, I thought we was going to break down below 24,8 and give us a quick little uh, reversal. Instead, we had the grayscale news, but here we are, 26. 482. So personally, again, I think we're going to come down maybe and check that 23, four level scare everybody, get an oversold technometer again, and that will be the final uh, major low. So uh, that's my thought on Bitcoin here. And uh, again, to catch these, I mean, we give a lot of information on YouTube and Twitter, but to catch these trades live and so quick, you might want to be on patreon.com slash learn crypto. Let's go back to uh, Nick and I. Yeah, that would be the move for sure. I mean, there's a couple other things that we just briefly want to discuss. If you watch our other videos on my Twitter or on YouTube, then you already heard about it. But, you know, the Grayscale news was uh, bullish. Obviously, that Grayscale won. But it didn't mean a Bitcoin spot ETF is approved. It just means that their application needs to be reviewed. The, this is part of the reason why, you know, there's seven Bitcoin spot ETFs that are going to be approved, denied, or delayed starting on September 1st through September 4th. All the bulls are saying, oh, we're getting a Bitcoin spot ETF because of Grayscale News. I think it is quite the contrary. I think they will delay all of these, which is probably going to put pressure on Bitcoin uh, because Grayscale is supposed to have first mover advantage. And if they approved any of these while Grayscale is hasn't even got their review yet, I think that would be a very bad look. I think they all get delayed 45 days. And then best case scenario, you get a Grayscale Bitcoin spot ETF in early October and you maybe get the BlackRock ETF approved mid-October. Uh, I think worst case scenario and most likely scenario would be they max out their delays, which takes us all the way to January of 2024. And that's when we get our Bitcoin spot ETFs, which would be very bullish leading into the Bitcoin halving, which is set to occur in April. The reason I think that's going to happen is Gary Gensler himself said, I don't think we get a Bitcoin spot ETF in 2023. I think we get a Bitcoin spot ETF in 2024. 
and the timelines match up, if they do max delays, well, what do you know? The final approval or denial will occur January 15th, 2024. So don't overthink these things. Don't fall into the uh, headline hype and really dig deep into what all of these uh, court rulings really mean. And that's what we're here to try to help you with. I'm going to go to the crypto bubble real quick so we can see what's on there today. I kind of like this uh, bubble website here. We got MKR up 12% today. DYDX up 5%. Looks like XDC down 11. Pepe down 5%. Nick can talk about that here in a minute because he did give a leverage trade in there. Don't normally do a lot of leverage trades, but uh, he did jump on that. If you go to the weekly bubble, you'll see Pepe down 23.7%. So uh, uh, definitely had some activity there. So uh, Nick, if you want to talk about that Pepe trade. Yeah, I think pertaining to Pepe, the reason that it's had such a sell-off is there's uh, some issues where the developers change the multi-sig wallet. Multi-sig means it's a kind of a security provision that, you know, you need five of eight people to say, yes, let's move tokens and spend them for this for it to happen. Well, they reduced it to only needing two of eight signatures. Shortly after the two of eight signatures are reduced, what do you know? Those two people said, yeah, sure, let's grab $15 million worth of tokens. They sent them to centralized exchanges and they dumped on the market, sending price down. Then, of course, blockchain is transparent about that information, and they dump as well. That's why we've had such a catastrophic dump. Uh, over the past couple of days, I've done some personal Pepe shorts, and a couple of days ago, I said, hey, guys, let's take a small 20x short on Pepe. I think Bitcoin's going to give back its gains, plus it already has FUD, fear of the undetermined in the market with uh, these, these team tokens being moved and sold. I think that gives us a win. Uh, we did close that position. It was like I officially closed it personally for 45% gains. We had people in our community giving screenshots saying that they made upwards of 80% gains. And if we would have had a little more uh, steel ball, yeah, if we would have had a little more steel balls, you know, with the sell- I've got balls of steel. Those would have been some triple digit gains. So we're going to try to give leverage ideas, uh, but Pepe, that's kind of how we look at things. We're looking at things from a technical perspective, but also seeing the fundamentals that can help uh, really help push the market in the direction we think it's going to go. I know from a Wyckoff perspective, you're looking at volume and five minute data. And then I think that's why me and Todd are a great duo is I'm looking more at the fundamental and macro side. And he's looking more at just the charts. We come together for our analysis and try to provide that first directly to patreon.com slash learn crypto members. And then some of that information gets trickled out here on YouTube or gets trickled out on Twitter as well. But uh, we, we're trying to help as many people as we can. Uh, but when you're doing everything transparently and you're and you're stacking winners, that's why we do have the private group. I think Pepe still will be running into trouble. The team tokens, they said they're done selling them. They said, oh, that was, you know, bad actors, but they still have like $10 million worth of tokens. And whether you want to trust a PFP, uh, a random anonymous person in crypto, that's up to you. I, if you're up big in Pepe, I would just rotate to something else. Just sell out, take your gains, rotate to something else. Go if you want a, a meme token. Okay, you got Doge, you got you got Floki, you got Shib. Uh, you can you can look at those. You, for more risk, you can look at Mong, whatever it may be. Chrissy Ish, what's going on? One here I want to go over real quick. That's been good for me. I'm I'm also uh, I did get involved with the London hedge fund. So uh, XLE is a position that I gave to pro traders. Again, that's at wycopsmi.com to get uh, really 100% stock trades. The crypto, you want to be at patreon.com slash learn crypto. But here's the XLE, June 26. We gave a buy. We're still long. Had a chance to add on on August 22nd. So far, I've not taken it. I will wait here because I think the SPY pulls back, as I've already shown. But the June 26, we gave a buy down there around 78 and change. We're setting at 88 and change. So we're up, uh, what, about 12.5% or so. Again, the technometer is giving us those entries. And uh, we're looking to add on. I think oil continues higher. Could be a problem for inflation. Might be as the, the tr trade was really short SPY, long XLE. So that's a trade I think probably still works here. And uh, we'll continue to watch that as we uh, move forward. Yeah, and if you want to share my screen, Todd. You know it. There you go. There's one more bout of news that I just wanted to touch base with in this uh, in this live show, 
And that's it, that uh, Elon Musk's X has obtained the Rhode Island currency transmission license, which is also required for cryptocurrency payments. So I've talked about this a little bit on my Twitter. Here's a post here as well. But essentially, in an interview, Elon said by the end of this year, by the end of 2023, he wants Twitter X to be the all-in-one financial platform application, meaning he wants to have what Twitter is now for a social platform, but integrate Robinhood and, and, some, and tipping and everything else to this platform. We do know that now he has got this license, which is huge, but we know he's a big proponent of Bitcoin and also a big proponent of Doge. So I think those implementations are coming soon for X users. And I think that would be a small bullish action for Bitcoin and probably more of a long-term bullish action for Doge. So stay tuned. We are looking for an entry on Dogecoin. This goes back to if you are up big on Pepe and you, and you like the meme ecosystem, rotate out of it, reduce that risk and get into Doge. Doge isn't having the the team fighting issue. And also I think Doge at some point before the end of this year is going to have some big news from Elon Musk in which Doge and Bitcoin will be implementing directly into the X application. What else we got going on over here in the chat box? Not much. Do you guys have any questions, fundamental questions? Do you have any technical analysis questions? We've kind of given you a rundown on Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, Solana. We sold all those higher, looking for re-entries. Uh, Coinbase, MicroStrategy, and Riot sold all of them higher, looking for re-entries. And uh, now it's a waiting game. You know, we're seeing red in Bitcoin here. So the position for us is have patience, wait for the setup, and then tell you guys when the setup occurs. That's what we're doing. We, we don't we don't trade like a lot of these people out here where they're just like, oh, buy now, buy now, buy now, buy the dip, DCA, DCA. I know it's hard. Inflation is high. Interest rates are high. You don't have unlimited money. We've been in a bear market for two years. We got to pick and choose our battles, pick and choose our finite 100% entries and make trades based off that information. Sorry, guys, I got to do a little bit of other business here. Maz Cabrell says, Todd, the Argies stock is bullish. A-R-G-Y-S. I have not heard of that. A R G Y S. The R G stock. Maybe R B stock? I'm not sure. Retype that for us, Moss Cabrell. The ish says, let's say COVID 2.0 happens. Is there any stocks of worthy of looking into? I think we're gonna have to answer that on another show, Chris. Me and Todd have talked and said, hey, I think they're gonna push mass mandates again in COVID 2.0 due to the election coming up. And and we're we're trying to look at the bucket of what did well in COVID one and what we think could kind of catch those headwinds for COVID 2.0. I think it's going to be a less dramatic effect because I think half the population uh, now now doesn't really believe in COVID, doesn't believe in COVID vaccinations, doesn't believe in masks. That's whatever it is. But how it affects the market, uh, we're going to have to dive deeper into that sector. But I think you're on to something there. And this is something me and Todd have talked about. Somebody's The YPF and GGAL Argentina stocks, I'd have to actually go to uh, my... Uh, a different screen here because those are again not in my software. Nick, do you want to talk about uh, V Chain a little yeah, bit? Sat- I'm gonna do the double screen. Yeah, sure. V-chain. Also, I'll, I'll skip to Sats Sats McGee here. He said I might have missed this, but you you are you guys back in Coin? I know you guys sold that 105, but did you get back in the 70s? So I'll show you the chart exactly what we've done and what you missed uh, because we do post a lot of this in public, but Patreon has the exact trades. So yeah, you were up to date that we sold above 105. We actually bought back in the 70s. We had an overhead buy around $76. So we got long around 76, rode it for a couple of days. The big news out of Grayscale yesterday caused this big green bar. And we actually told our group to sell for 11.2% gains again at 84.68, 84.50, roughly around there. And now uh, Coinbase has come back down to 79. We are actively looking for a re-entry in Coinbase once again as we do believe that is going to be on the right side of history. Uh, when Bitcoin uh, has its next cycle, it's going to be one we want to be in. We think they're going to win their core case against the SEC, and we think we have, they have a ton of upside objectives uh, with everything they're doing over there. So, yes, we sold at 105, bought back in the 70s, sold again for 11% gains, and we're currently in cash looking to buy back uh, our shares of Coinbase on a further dip. So stay tuned. We'll try to post that as fast as we can here on for free on YouTube and Twitter. But if you want the live exact timestamp trades, join us at patreon.com slash learn crypto. And uh, we're, we're well on our well here, well on our way here with uh, Coinbase. 
I've got the uh, VChain VET chart on the software here below my screen. Uh, again, we've got a little bit of a uh, divergence between OP and price. So uh, let me reload the software OP at the bottom. So again, I you know I'd be a buyer on that. Again, you can see the OP hitting new lows. That's the third from the bottom. While price is holding the uh, previous sell-off there in June, and also so far the sell-off there August 15th, so uh, not oversold. Not one of my favorite charts because it has been downtrending here. But uh, again, next buy we have on the journal market, I probably would uh, have no problem with buying VET. There you go. Ab Benjamin, there's your answer. Can you talk about VeChain chart? And Todd just went over it. I don't have any real formal opinion. We haven't traded it too much lately. That was kind of a 2017 last bull market darling, um, you know, along with ICX and some of those. But uh, it is still being active. It still has big, big partnerships. Every time I buy these UFC fights, I see VeChain as one of their main sponsors. So they definitely have funding coming in. They definitely have income and revenue. So I think they're going to stick around for this next bull market and we'll, we'll see what kind of actions they take. I'll need to take a deeper look at the fundamentals to see if it can find its way into our official uh, portfolio over at patreon.com slash learn crypto. I'm going to bring up a chart of LDO. Let me go to that. Um, this is a four hour chart. I mean, this goes back a ways. I can't not too impressed with the downtrend there. I mean, maybe this was a spring and we're testing it. So possibly still some accumulation, but by Wyckoff, definitely buy strong, buy strength, sell weakness. So, uh, this one's still a little too weak for me, but if it would hold up here and we get a buy in the general market, again, that could be one that uh, is springing this uh, buck 57 level or so that has supported it back in May and June, scalped down through it uh, middle of August. So uh, that one might finally try to outperform, but uh, not a favorite one here for me. Man, big red bar on Bitcoin. Pull that Bitcoin chart up, up down to 26,230. Big red bar. And guess what, guys? 95% of the gains that were created on the Grayscale News are gone. Just like that. And at the highs, we were saying be careful because they might give them up. So, so far, make a tweet. not caught and nothing. Again, let's go back here. Hold on one second. Let go of this Bitcoin chart. I mean, there we are. You can see here waterfall decline 26,150. Ethereum down to 1647. So, uh, so far, so good live here on what we've been looking for. Again, MicroStrategy, Riot, Mara, Hut, all those were uh, sitting on cash, looking for those to pull back a little bit more. Uh, well, we're clear back here to this 26,1 level. Crazy. I was doing pre-recorded videos, adding them all to YouTube. They're all on Twitter. Go to the profiles, check them out. Every video we had, every discussion me and Todd had said, we are selling this rip if you have it. If you don't own it, you don't want to buy it. I think it's going to give back all the gains back into the $26,000 range. And then the quote unquote bear case would be like uh, one more new low to 23, 22, five level, like Todd was saying. And that would be your five waves completed. And then we can actually move on and move forward with what's going on. Bitcoin has been very weak in the face of stocks continuing to rally. So if stocks turn down, it's going to put a lot of pressure on Bitcoin. It'll be interesting to see. It's nice to be on the right side of this trade once again. And hopefully you guys follow us. And if you don't follow us, look, we're not always right. But we think uh, both of us together, uh, well, as well as the input from our loyal community, we get we get a lot of things right. And we're, we're on the right side of the trade more often than not. So and keep staying post, tuned, guys. Post this morning on Patreon and the Pro Traders that the SPY was nearing overbought, looked like uh, you know, risk was high for stocks. S&P now has gone minus after being up about, what was it, 17 at the highs, we're minus two now. Dow's down 68 after being up, what was it, like 160 at the highs. So again, that probably was, uh, you know, maybe a B wave on stocks. So we've got an AB headed lower or uh, could be a one, two, and we're headed a lot lower. So that's why, again, we're setting in cash a little bit worried here for the downside short term. And uh, let's see what happens here. 
Yeah, if there's no other questions, we might need to cut this short and get in Discord so we can answer those members' questions and see if there's any trade setups that we need to get. Again, we are uh, we sold Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, Solana, Coin, MicroStrategy, Riot, all higher levels, all looking for a buyback. And we avoided buying the FOMO yesterday or two days ago with the Grayscale News. We're sitting here in a good position. So we want to make sure that uh, all of our followers and supporters and you guys can get in these uh, good positions on the good setup and continue to find some success. I'm going to go back to the what's stock going chart. on, old man. What's up, old man? I'm going to go back to the stock chart here for any latecomers. We've got the SPY again. Uh, if you go back last nine months, green dot buys, red dot sells have been really helpful on the SPY. The last buy that we had when it took out that level, that would have been a little bit bearish. That's that 150 or that 451 level on the SPY. And again, that's the level we just went through this morning and reverse lower. That looks like kind of an important level. If you look at Elliott Wave, maybe we had five waves down, ABC rally. So this could be A down, B up, and now we're headed, you know, maybe back down to 420, 423. Or it's a one, two. I know Elliott Wave International, Robert Prechter, they're thinking we've done a huge one, two. This is another one, two. We're headed a lot lower. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to agree with that here right near right now, but, uh, you know, if, if interest rates stay strong here and they keep ratcheting up, who knows, uh, the Fed might still knock these stocks down and still might try to knock Bitcoin down a little bit more. So right here, right now, that's the worry. Let's see uh, how we act in the next uh, seven days, maybe seven to 10 days, and then see if we uh, can get some buy setups and get back in on some of these uh positions that we're out of because we sold Bitcoin back there at 29,100 Ethereum at 1831 Solana at 2321 I believe it was so uh, BNB at 240 so things are definitely uh, leaking out from those levels and uh, yeah old man wants you old man wants you to pull up did you talk about did you talk about BNB yet? So if you want to pull up the BNB chart real quick and uh, you can show our previous buys and sells and see what we're looking at. Uh, I'm assuming it's going to be very similar to uh, our other objectives, which is lower. Yeah, definitely. Let me go back to the crypto chart. Um, here's the BNB. Same type of thing. I, I have traded it. Small profits. I mean, the last one again, 240 was the buy and the sell. You can see here we had the green buy, the red sell. So we're flat there. You can see we did have an oversold technometer on the break to 217 and a chance to sell it on the uh, run up to 235. I did not catch that trade. Uh, it got oversold on that big break to 217. But uh, again, 45.5 technometer. Looking for maybe a move down to that 200 level and an oversold technometer to give us a chance to get back in. So uh, I still think we're going to make major lows here, but uh, we need stocks acting okay. We need the Fed maybe uh, increase the money supply, lower rates some well here, and uh, get everything headed much higher again. For anybody who don't know, I'm going to run, uh, first of all, again, I'm a registered investment advisor. I'm going to run a disclaimer here real quick. Let me do that, get that out of the way. There is a high degree of risk involved in trading cryptocurrencies. Our thoughts and ideas are for entertainment purposes only. Please consult your personal advisor or do your own research. Past results are not indicative of future returns. All right. I don't know if anybody's got any more ideas. I mean, I could run a crypto Discord commercial if you want to do that, Nick, real quick. Take a drink of water. Yeah. See if anyone's got any stock or crypto to go over. Otherwise, we're going to wrap it up and be prepared yeah, if yeah. Bitcoin breaks down the lows here. If you have any questions, answer, ask them now, boys. Smash ask that like, questions. smash that subscribe. Quick one-minute commercial on the crypto Discord, patreon.com slash learn crypto. Be right back. Warren Buffett. American investor, business tycoon, and one of the wealthiest people in the world once said, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. But how is that possible? Well, knowledge is power. 
In 2020, it is no longer news that cryptocurrencies are the currency of the digital future. Bitcoin's stability amidst unprecedented global economic impacts from COVID-19 has proven once again that crypto is here to stay. Learning how to trade, when to trade, and where to trade crypto assets can make the difference between success and failure. At LearnCrypto.io, we offer a pathway to sustainable and lifelong wealth by helping open-minded beginners and experienced traders navigate the thin ice of the cryptocurrency markets. Live shows, interviews, coin reviews, fundamental analysis, predictive trading bots, and open chat access to a community of real traders. These are just a few of the benefits you'll receive with a membership on patreon.com forward slash learn crypto. Sign up today if you strive to build yourself a brighter tomorrow. There you go, guys. It doesn't look like there's too many questions. There is a shout out to Old Man for saying hit that like button. Shout out to AB Benjamin. You guys are the best. Thank you for your great work. Hey, we appreciate that. Also, I don't know if you look very closely, but when we first created that little commercial to give us a water break, and we were hammering down everybody's throat to join our group and to buy crypto and, and you know whatever you see on the news that Bitcoin's going to zero is incorrect. The charts are showing $8,000 Bitcoin on its way up to $69,000. Although there has been a bear market and we didn't take all of our profits and we've had drawdowns and whatever, we made life-changing gains for ourselves and other people in the last bull market. We went hard into the paint with Bitcoin at 8000 on the way to 69000 and uh, shout out to all the OGs who have been with us for the, for this entire journey. And shout out to all the new people who see this video and hop along. Me and Todd, we aren't fly by night people. We aren't. We didn't go silent in the bear in the bear market. We've been here for many market cycles. Became public in 2016 and 2017, and uh, you know pride ourselves on transparency, morals, ethics, and really trying to uh, build a, a nice community here who's been long standing through the bulls and the bears. And I think on stocks, I mean, we got a you know pretty big sell off there off the highs. I pretty well had stayed somewhat bullish, staying, stating that uh, probably still have new highs coming. And I still think that. I mean, stocks, we've got a lot of problems here short term, but I think ultimately stocks are still going to probably go back to all time highs and uh, Bitcoin doing the same thing. So uh, whether we've already made the low or we're going to go to new lows here in the coming months, I'm not sure yet. I think my sweet spot really is looking out. Uh, four to 12 weeks. So like right now, definitely after today, stocks look a little toppy. Crypto looks a little heavy. So uh, that's where we're at. And until the indicators change, that's where we're going to be setting. Sounds good. And realize, guys, we are bullish on the crypto market as a whole. So although many of our large trading bags are in cash right now, we do have smaller positions for passive income in the likes of Zen, in the likes of Adam, Ferrum, and some others. So we do maintain some exposure to the crypto market. Uh, while earning passive income in those designated tokens, preparing for the next bull run. So when you come to join us at patreon.com slash learn crypto, or you watch us on this channel or Twitter, realize we're, we're trying to really sculpt a full portfolio for you guys in the right mindset to be able to, you know, reap the benefits of the bull markets, but mentally survive the bear markets. That's all I've got. So with the action, I think we need to head out, get back to uh, some things we got to do. So I'm going to run another commercial on the Learn Crypto course, we do have also the Wyckoff Unleash course. We manage crypto and stock assets. So uh, if you need anything, hit us up. Otherwise, uh, Nick, get us out of here. Yeah, stay tuned for your daily updates on cryptocurrencies and stock, technical analysis, fundamental analysis, and news right here at Learn Crypto. See you. LearnCrypto.io. Are you trading or investing in the fast moving and exciting cryptocurrency markets? If so, you need to learn how to identify primary trading opportunities by implementing the Wyckoff trading method. This method was created by world-renowned stock speculator Richard D. Wyckoff and has been educating traders for 90 plus years. This course teaches you all you need to know to increase your returns while minimizing your risk using the Wyckoff trading method. Over 1,000 plus students have enrolled in the course since its launch in late 2017. Let's hear what some of the graduates had to say about the course. Craig says, this is a great course for the crypto trader. I have found it written in an easy to understand format and thorough in its content. BTC Capital says, I have tried to study TA for a few years, 
but until I purchased this course, I had been floundering. LearnCrypto.io is owned and powered by Wyckoff SMI.com, the original institute started by Mr. Wyckoff in 1931. Enroll today in our cryptocurrency course and you will receive lifetime access to our current 24 lessons as well as new ones we add. Also gain access to our course group at learncrypto.io to talk with Mr. Butterfield as well as other students as you proceed with your studies. You will also receive one free month to our Patreon Discord paid group as that is where we give our personal trade setups to our members. This is the only place where you can gain access to our proprietary indicators known as the Optimism Pessimism Index, the Force Index, and the Technometer. Take advantage today of this excellent course and begin reaping the rewards of a time-tested method from the grandfather of technical analysis, Richard D. Wyckoff. To get the best experience, download our Learn Crypto app and get started today. We'll see you all again. Sleep tight.